welcome back to my film and TV channel. You're all staying safe and well. We've got a film review for you to do, uh, to listen to today. A science fiction film. Yes, a, a joint production, uh, Australia and the USA. So, uh, yeah, interesting. I saw some early good reviews and then they sort of uh, petered out a little bit. But uh, a, bit, a bit of a mixed response to this. The public seem to like it. And critics, not so much. Uh, whose side am I on? I'm on my own side, of course I am. Anyway, we're going to have a look at something called Foe. F-O-E. So please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything, film and TV, reviews like this, information, vlogs, previews, lots of different things. So great to have you on board. Let me know what you think of this film or anything to do with film and TV. Just leave us your comments and uh, if it needs a reply, I will reply. Uh, so if it just needs a thumbs up, please, like like you're going to give me now, give us a thumbs up. Uh, that's what it'll get. So uh, please uh, jump on board and, jo and join the join the. Join the fun. I try and inform. If I can, I try and entertain. Not not always successfully, but I do my little best. That's all I can ask. That's all we can ask, isn't it? Right, let's get on with this film for 110 minutes. Yeah, felt it as well to me. Not a good sign. Science fiction psychological thriller. This is classed as directed by Australian director Garth Davis. And it's based on Ian Rees. I think Ian Rees was involved in the screenplay on this as well. Uh, 2018 novel of the same name. So yes, foe, not much, not much print used there. An Australian-US co-production filmed in Australia. The film stars... Uh, oh, I never know how to pronounce this one. Sharice Ronan, is it? Sharice, S-A-O-I-R-S-E. Sharice Ronan, Paul Mescal and Aaron Pierre, yeah, it's not not a massive cast in this one, that's for sure. So I'm sure it didn't cost that much apart from the wages. It was released uh, on the uh, nationwide in, in the US at limited theatres as well, including worldwide on October the 6th and in Australia on November the 2nd. So I'm recording this on November the 9th, 2023. So any comments and scores for us at that day? What's it about? What's well, about the lives? It's say it's a dystopian future. This is 2065, I think. So set a little, little way ahead. Uh, and the lives of a married couple are turned upside down when a stranger arrives at their farm and informs a husband he will be sent to a large space station and his wife will be left in the company of a robot. Yes, uh, not like Robbie the robot. This one, that's for sure. But uh, that, that's the gist of it. Now, one of the problems I've got with this is. The backstory and lots of information as to why and wherefores uh, was was missing for this. You just have to take things for granted. These scores are at the 9th of November, as as I've just mentioned. The critics don't particularly like it. Rotten Tomatoes only 23% of the 96 critics were positive about it, and it only averaged 4.6 out of 10. That's 22 fresh, but 74 rotten. The website's consensus, Paul, Mescal and Sharice Ronan give it all they've got, but they're un ultimately undone by Foles' clunky sci-fi trappings and ponderous attempts to generate psychological thrills. I'd have to agree with that. I thought, I thought Sharice Ronan was very, very good. I'm not overly impressed with Paul Mescal acting, to be honest with you. But yeah, it was a bit clunky for me as well. Metacritic, the other side look at... Uh, they average this 44 out of 100, so very similar figure. That's based on 33 critics. Four were four were positive, just four. 22 mixed, which is sometimes not a bad thing, but it's not a good thing either. And seven were negative. But the two, the two, uh, two magazines I subscribed to, Total Film and Empire, were both positive about this. Total Film's James Mottram said... Admittedly, the film's oddly paced. Elipitical Elipe middle section may leave you, I don't know what that means, scratching your head. But then the twisty third act pulls it all together, sending shivers down the spine. Yeah, but the, the trouble is I'd, I'd sussed out most of it and didn't send shivers down my spine. I'm not, I'm not, well, it's cold, but that might be the reason. But Ela Kemp also likes it from Empire magazine. So even though most of the critics are hating it or having a downer on it, the two, two big... Magazines in the UK here are liking it. Ella, Ke Ella Kemp said, uh, an emotionally familiar take on loyalty and technology in a world where love and survival feel near impossible. Reed's writing shines and there's nobody better than Mescal and Ronan to broadcast heartbreak. But the public love it. Yes, generally, all right. We know Empire and Total Film do. 
and the public tend to love it on Rotten Tomatoes. 76% positivity, 3.7 out of 5. That's not bad, 7.5 out of 10, near enough. Instead, movie database slightly down. I mean, it's not quite at the 6 out of 10 I like to see, but they certainly like it more than the critics do, and they're giving it a 5.6 out of 10. That's almost 800 scores and reviews as I'm doing this. And my thoughts, I think you can gather, I wasn't overly impressed with this at all. I mean, despite a near two-hour runtime, there's just too much not covered in this sort of bleak future science fiction, dystopian future uh, film. You just, you know, you sort of get the gist of what the problem is, but there's just not enough background as to this, what's what all this is all about. Uh, and there should be, it's not, you know, they, they give you the basic information. There should be a lot more information that you don't really get out of this. And the characters, as uh, what the... Pretty uninvestable. I didn't like Iron particularly. No, no offense. I didn't. I didn't think. I just thought they were very hard to invest in the two lead characters. Of course, the guy who turns up, the strange who informs about this robot. But um, yeah, I just thought the drama side was pretty unrewarding, and you could see a lot of work went into some of it, but just not good enough for me. With little or no backstory, it just felt like a very long, small part of a much longer story. In other words, a couple of chapters in a book of 30 or 40 chapters, and that's how it felt. Um, not interesting. They weren't even interesting chapters at that. There was one or two things that sort of piqued me interest, but not much. There's no real, there weren't any real surprises for me either, I'm sure. Some people who weren't concentrating might have had one or two surprises, but uh, there are twists. But by the time you get to the final act, and therefore uh, where the twists, you should be should be shocked or impressed. Uh, yeah, I just wasn't surprised or riveted by the film in general. So, as I said, I more or less sussed it out. I mean, the first two thirds of the film been better then the ending probably would have tipped the boxes, but it it just it just dragged along till the last third of the film. For me, it was just boring and predictable. So if I was going to score this, I'd have to be rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. I'd have to be negative on Metacritic. And if I don't think something's worthy of a 5 out of 10, I just don't score it. I'm not going to score this. It just probably, if he, if he held a gun to me, I'd probably give it 3 and a half, 4 out of 10. But uh, So much in line with the critics. But uh, yeah, uh, I thought this, this was uh, very disappointing. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys. Great to hear from you. Uh, let me know if you liked it. As I say, some people do. A lot of the audience have liked it. Let me know what you think. Great to hear from you. So, me again. That's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.